Good morning, everybody. Um, thanks very much for joining us. Um, welcome to the RealX Auditorium. Um, uh, you can see on your right hand side um, of your screen there, there's comment buttons, there's Q&A. Um, feel free to use those throughout. The joy of this being live is that we'll be able to, to answer your questions and pick up on your comments live as well during the session. Um, really great panel here today. Um, great session as well focused on ESG and impact. Um, there's been a lot of discussion around that, and we're particularly looking here at, at some of the key trends there, but also um, how you develop effective strategies in terms of, of real estate and your real estate assets. Um, so let's, let's start just with introductions. Um, my name's Richard Betts. Um, I'm the group publisher at Real Asset Media. Um, we run around 80 of these events um, each year, kind of bringing together expertise and insights and research on the market. Um, both in terms of sectors, geographies, but as well as key topics for the area like, uh, like ESG and impact, for example. Um, and in this space, we also um, publish um, Impact magazine and run a series of events around that, um, which also look in a dedicated way at ESG, purpose-driven investment and, uh, and impact strategies. Um, so let's, uh, let's, let's just introduce the panel. Um, so Rokia, let's, let's start with you. Um, a quick introduction of yourself and, and Berlin here. Yes, thank you, Richard. Good morning. I am uh, Rokia Bos, representing Berlin Hub. Uh, on a daily basis, active as the uh, head of real estate finance for the Benelux. Berlin Hub is a uh, real estate lender, one of the largest in Germany, with a focus on digitalization and uh, ESG. Uh, in the meanwhile, we have uh, issued so for several billions in uh, sustainable bonds, which basically triggered our activities in, in, in sustainability seven years ago. Um, for the coming years, we have a focus on uh, making our portfolio green, greener and uh, increasing the uh, transparency of what we are uh, doing. And uh, I'm glad to join this discussion. Looking forward to it. Great. Thanks, Rakia. Um, Christiana, over, over to you. Just a, a brief introduction of yourself and, and PwC. Thank you very much, Richard. Good morning from me, everybody. Um, yeah, thanks for inviting me. My name is Christiane Conrad. I'm a local partner at PwC based in Frankfurt. I lead the EMEA real estate ESG practice at PwC, which is basically an interdisciplinary team um, consisting of consultants, lawyers, um, sustainability climate experts, valuers, and recently also our audit colleagues joined. Um, and we are right now heavily involved in our yeah, particular our international team um, to help our clients to develop or kind of further develop their own ESG strategies and um, to implement them. Great. And I saw on LinkedIn, Christiana, that you've just come back also from an ESG session in the in the US. So it'd be interesting to pick up on some of the, the sort of insights you, you got from that as well. Um, Abel, over, over to you and uh, a quick introduction of yourself and uh, Dabble. Absolutely. Thanks for, for having me today. My name is Abel Samanego. I'm the founder and, and CEO of Dabble, background as an automation engineer. Uh, we are here as, as one of, let's say, part of the solution that we can help us to, to collaborate and, and move it forward um, with a really clear mission. So what we do is to, to develop solutions in, that can, can offer the most scalable way to, to really reduce drastically CO2 emissions worldwide in the real estate stock as quickly as possible. So um, very sure what we do right now in the first phase is focusing on, on around 35% of the commercial real estate have already the, the infrastructure, so to say, this building management systems, HVAC, so heating, ventilation, and conditioning. And, and we plug the solution on top, software, nothing else, that can, that can operate those legacy equipment in a more, in a more efficient way. Um, we have already coverage, especially here in, in Europe, and a very good 26% uh, of, of average in the HVAC consumption. So let's, let's participate. I'm very happy and I'm very looking forward to, to, to learn more from, from the panelists and, and the people and, and try to move this together and, and have really an impact. That is one of the things of, of this panel. Great. Thanks, Abel. Um, uh, yeah, let's, let's come to you. Brief introduction of yourself and, uh, and Union. 
Yes, thanks for having me and to be part of this panel. My name is Jan von Meilenkort. I'm from Union Investment. I'm the so-called head of sustainability. We manage roughly about 500 um, properties uh, in 26 different countries around the world. And um, yes, uh, with the team of, I think it's, uh, no, I don't know, <laughs> it's eight persons. Um, we try to manage uh, uh, sustainability within, within our company and to be climate neutral by the year 2050 at least. Great, thanks, Jan. Um, and last but very not least, uh, Jaap, over, over to you and Altera. Yeah, thank you, Richard. And it's always a pleasure to be on a panel you organize, always very professional. Uh, my name is Jaap de Bel, for everyone who's joining this. Um, the CEO of Altera, uh, some brief words on Altera. Uh, we focus on our residential and convenience retail, true core, true value, and true impact. Uh, we consider ourselves to be an ESG front runner, with the residential fund being number one worldwide, according to GRESP. Very efficient with 35 basis points, that's all. Uh, very transparent and also very hands on and dedicated. Uh, we have over, we, uh, we service 60 plus institutional investors, uh, so just over 3 billion assets under management. And I've been with the company for five years. And as I already mentioned to some of you, uh, I really like it. We have an outstanding set of colleagues and a great platform. Great, and uh, and I said last minute, not least, but I I, I I didn't I didn't mean that because of ah. course Ron. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah, a typical yeah. uh, English joke, I guess, Richard. So happy <laughs> happy to join this excellent uh, expert panel. Uh, my name is uh, Rolf Berg. <coughs> I'm the I'm the CEO of MI, which is an advisory boutique uh, in alternative uh, real assets. Uh, next to this, I'm associate professor at the Amsterdam School of Real Estate. And I'm really uh, driven to create a future-proof society and therefore focused on especially senior housing and healthcare real estate. Uh, we founded the Senior Housing and Healthcare Association beginning 2020. I'm the chairman and also happy to announce that I'm the managing editor of an international journal called Impact. And, um, and that's really... I think the main topic of today, how can we create a more sustainable uh, build environment? So, uh, pleasure to join this. Great. Thanks very much, Ron. Um, maybe let's, let's start with you, Christiana, just in, just in terms of, I suppose, some of the, the, the key trends. Um, what are you seeing there? And it would be interesting to pick up on your experience there in the US as well. Yeah, the, the key trends basically. So we see a very complex dynamic um, transition phase rise now, right now, mainly driven by um, regulation following the European Green Deal, but also now the Fit for 55 packages. And um, when you look at um, yeah, all the teams um, around the globe, the eyes are really on, on Europe and um, there's a lot of interest um, to see what kind of regulations can be used as a blueprint for their own national regulation, but also what kind of best practice approaches might, might, might work there as well. And um, yeah, I was very honored to be invited to speak last week um, to an US audience and my task was basically to shed some light was on on the development in in Europe, and um, it was really good to see that also, yeah the ESG topic has moved up on the agenda in in the US. So as said before, there's a great interest on what we are doing here, and particular investors coming from Europe investing in the US, asking for um, taxonomy compliant properties, for example. If, really made an impact in the US and so um, kind of we see, yeah what we see there is basically they, they want to prepare and want basically also to figure out um, what their their approach would be and um, I think when looking at the US of course um, the net zero target uh, climate related um, targets are on top of the agenda then we see um, a lot of um, green building certification and particularly certifications and what was also um, quite good to discuss some other environmental targets for example um, biodiversity ecosystems or particular also that life cycle approach should be conducted um, and that yeah the transition now to a circular economy will also have a big impact on real estate in the next coming years. 
So uh, that's... No, go ahead, Christiana, sorry. <laughs> no, I just wanted to close and say, okay, that's, so that's really good compared to a couple of years ago. Um, also, there uh, a noticeable change is, is happening there as well. So now I'm curious to see where they will go. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's interesting. Um, I mean, there's been a lot of discussion in the market that it's, you know, there's been talk around this for some time. Um, and, and interestingly, we were at COP26 as well. Um, and the increase in terms of the real estate sector that were there was, was quite noticeable, I thought. Um, but Rocky, just, just coming to you, um, do you think now that people are seeing this as much more as, you know, a time to stop talking about it and actually acting? Um, you know, I know you've been active in that green financing side for, for some time there at Berlin, but, but are you seeing a sort of a change in terms of the, the views of the, of the market overall? Absolutely. It, it has become very concrete. It became really down from something abstract to something which is on the table on every case we are now financing. There is, uh, especially in the office sector, uh, not a single proposition where we do not start uh, our discussions with uh, sustainability questions. So, first of all, is it sustainable or can it become sustainable? And uh, we see that our customers are uh, facing some challenges uh, there, uh, especially during the acquisition uh, phase, where it is important to know if you can actually bring or make this property uh, future proof. And uh, future proof, uh, particularly in the Netherlands, means that uh, you must have a C label by the end of this year. Um, and um, broader in Europe, um, you may expect uh, similar measures, uh, meaning that uh, at some point these measures will have to be uh, uh, taken. So it, it really came down to, uh, to working level and uh, we left the talking level. Great. Um, and it would be interesting just to pick up from, from you, um, I suppose, Jan, I mean, like Yap, you know, union investment has been, you know, in many ways at the forefront of the sort of, um, you know, sustainability uh, ESG side. Um, I mean, do, do you see this being driven, I suppose, as much by resilience in terms of assets or the desire to do good? Where, where do you think this is sitting? I mean, it's interesting. Um, I, I in discussions we've been having sometimes, you know, people who might not have really been that interested in sustainability previously are now saying that they've got to do it. <laughs> um, so I suppose, how are you seeing that at Union Investment? Yeah, so you're not experts, but um, yeah, let me get how we do it at Union Investment. Um, uh, on the one hand, I'm happy that it's not a, not, um, a trend anymore, that there is already a proof you have to do it and you have to start uh, taking actions. Um, since we are doing or dealing with it for over 15 years now, it was kind of hard, even in our company, um, to um, yeah get the kind of DNA in all the staff members to that it's really a, a part we have to tackle and really have to solve with uh, for our um, properties because um, uh, buildings are responsible, as we all know, for 40% of the carbon emissions worldwide. So um, that's something w which we have to um, take responsibility on. So. In my opinion, it's good that we have proved now that we have to do something in terms of regulations. On the other hand, um, in my opinion, regulation is driving us now, or the, the um, investors now, a bit more towards um, a digital um, uh, a decision, as you might call it, in terms of um, do I invest sustainable? Is it already sustainable? Or do I invest in so-called brown investments? And um, in my opinion, I think we need a solution, a transformation towards uh, sustainable buildings because um, the broad variety of the buildings has already been there for a lot of years, and um, we have to tackle tackle the the building stock, the existing building stock, and not the new buildings. So, um, I think there's still a lot of work to do, not in terms of innovations, inventions for um, how to really get the building sustainable, but also towards the investor to to tell them what in our sector really is um, the actions we have to take and what the problem is right now. Um, and Jan, just just from your point of view, are you seeing a sort of increased focus on the S in terms of ES and G, that sort of social impact side. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, uh, in my opinion, I see that there's a lot of companies um, trying to solve the S because it might be easier and not uh, you have to won't have to spend so much money on it because we always deal with it. Every company has a 
um, uh, impact project within their staff members they they are trying to um, put action on. Um, but uh, in my point of view, we have uh, the buildings are responsible for carbon emissions, so we have to tackle the E. And the S is, has always been important and was always there, um, but it's not the the solution for the climate change. So therefore, the S is very important. It was always be, uh, it was always and has always been, and it has to be in the future. But um, in my opinion, the E will be the most important. Part okay, great. It, no, it, interesting, and we'll we'll pick up on that a, a, a little bit more. Um, and Abel, coming to you, um, just in terms of, uh, I mean, Jan mentioned their digitalization. Um, and how important is that sort of the, the data side, the digitalization side going to be in terms of being able to deliver some of these improvements? Because obviously there's going to be improvements that are required um, from new development, but also from, um, uh, you know, as Jan is mentioning there, from standing assets. Absolutely. Now, as Jan mentioned, it's, it's, it's completely right. So actually, our, our focus is aligned with it. So we are focusing on, on the stock. Um, we really need to, a solution in the short term. And obviously, new buildings are, I think, around 1% of, of the total square meters of, of the, every year. So this is not relevant. We, there we will not find a solution. Um, what is the challenge? What is the point that we are? I mean, first, to be realistic. Uh, solutions like like us that we are offering and obviously facing companies like Union Investment that we know that they are many decades more than us in the market, but um, being realistic here and say, okay, um, we are facing at least 10, 20, 30% of the portfolio that we can tackle now very fast, that we can have an impact, really an impact, like a reduction of kilowatt hour per square meter as quickly as possible, completely frictionless. So that is our some kind of, of approach also to to regain the the, the trust there just yeah, showing some kind of facts first and then promises right but the, the deal okay data in the buildings uh, what were we facing is uh, is challenging we are talking about digitization sometimes we, we face buildings also that you don't even have even the paper data that we need to to proceed and we need to to, to proceed on on this way um, we have already, uh, we don't need to invent the wheel again. We are focusing on, on this kind of infrastructure that we have and, and being pragmatic with, I would say, some kind of good technology that we have in the market. We can have an impact very fast in the next five to 10 years. And for all the big players in the market, you don't really have to take a risk there. You have many smart solutions that will help you to, to make this happen. Uh, it's a matter of, as also Jan mentioned there, we, we have to change. We have to start taking the action and and stop talking. So really moving because they are there. Guys, all of you, they are there. We just need to, to move it. And also Roger is like financing this kind of stuff. Is there. We can do it. It's a matter of changing the mentality. I have to say in the last, and the concept and, and the start of double at least starts like four or five years ago. And, and three years ago, I wasn't kind of an alien on the stage. So really, I was offering this and people was like, yeah, green building, sustainability. And sorry, guys, but that was the reality. Nobody was really uh, putting attention and taking. And now we have the consequence. Everybody's too late. And now the regulations come. I sad that it should be like that, right? Because we are all, we all have the data. We had the data 30, 10 years ago, but we didn't want to listen. Um, so yeah, I'm happy to see that we are moving. And and also uh, been realistic with it and, and collaborate. And uh, delighted that you're no longer seen as an alien, able. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm very happy because <laughs> you know this is, it was tough the last three four years. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a good thing. Um, yeah, just 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 from your point of view, I mean, how do you? There, there's a lot of discussion actually around, and I'll come to this in a minute, but um, around the S particularly part of it and. Uh, how you know impact funds are regulated versus purpose driven investment versus all of those, um, but I suppose how how do you see that um, in in you know within Altera um, that that between you know doing good in terms of um, CO two reduction you know positive uh, you, you know for society um, I, I suppose how do you see that how do you do that effectively within your portfolio. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's. I'll try to be, you know, short and, and, and snappy on this. So you have the E, the S, and the G. Uh, they 
we have integrated all of those in our value creation model. With the E, as mentioned by Jan, focusing on energy efficiency, reducing the greenhouse gases. Uh, the S for us is the well-being of our customers, both the investors, but also the tenants and other stakeholders, uh, applying additional services to them. And you can imagine that in terms of residential, there's a lot of additional services, but you need to think about affordability, for instance, also. And the G side is clarity, uh, you know, focus on transparency, uh, reporting, and leadership. If you put that together, the ESG, and you also tie in, for instance, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, and do your homework, you know, really go through all of those targets, uh, then you can find the measures which have an impact on the SDGs. Uh, and that's been put into the plan. Uh, the plan is uh, portfolio-wise and also on asset level. It's budgeted, so there's ESG CAPEX on board, and then you need to uh, act and execute. Uh, and coming back to some of the comments before, think ahead, act now, and commit yourself to certain goals. It's our aim to reach you know, Paris proof well before 2050, of course, and if possible, even before 2030. And all of that is in the goals, which not only involves the funds, the portfolios and the assets, but also our colleagues. Everyone needs to contribute to this. And if you do that type of homework, uh, and also uh, have a very open attitude, for instance, towards prop tech solutions, then you're making steps forward. And uh, then you can measure it, you get the data in, and then again, you can uh, analyze the gap towards your end goal. That's the way we do it. Great, thanks, Jan. Um, and Ron, in terms of the, um, uh, you know, in terms of that social impact side, purpose-driven investment, um, what are you seeing? Are you seeing an increased focus on that? Um, and, and I suppose in, in your sense, what, what do you see as driving that? Is that coming from the capital side? Is it coming from the occupier side? Um, is it driven by regulation? What's your sense of that? Yeah, well, I, I love the, the discussion already because I think also the, the purpose-driven uh, vision of YAP is a great example of also the capital flows who are driving uh, this uh, decarbonization. Uh, but I would like to add, indeed, also the occupancy uh, perspective, because I think the user demands are also quite key to demand for uh, climate neutral solutions, whether it's on the housing perspective, but also on the, on the social side. And um, I think the, the, the social perspective we should underline, because I'm not really uh, on the same page like uh, uh, Jan was mentioning before, because I think the social perspective uh, wasn't that very, wasn't very clear. I, I think uh, trying to make social impact and also measure the social impact is the most difficult one. Uh, but also uh, we should look at different ways of economic cycles, because I think one of the key topics for this, uh, well, road to Paris is to transform our economic cycle from a more linear, perspective to circular ways of doing uh, business. And I think it's also about creating alignment within the value chain of real estate. And therefore, I was really happy when pension funds were banning uh, uh, gas and, and this type of investments. And they are really now trying to make a, a positive impact with their capital. And in, indeed, uh, when you look at more uh, asset selections, uh, I think uh, the, 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 the selection is on, on for example, uh, uh, offices with a positive impact on maybe also area developments, but also uh, the affordable side of housing. And of course, uh, senior housing and, and healthcare real estate ticks all the boxes on ESG perspective. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's, it's quite important that we focus on two elements, to my opinion, because measurement is one. But valuation is quite key because when we don't valuate our investments, both on the E and the S, and especially the S is quite difficult, well, we, you don't see profit for your investment. And, and that's quite important because I think valuation needs to improve and also try to, to actually empower this uh, road to Paris. And I think this is uh, maybe the, the most important uh, task for us uh, in the value chain. Ron, don't you believe that that will happen automatically? Um, we see there's, of course, 
Um, and you're absolutely right. The, the user becomes more important. You have to look at the value chain. What's going to happen with the old buildings? We have a strong focus on our uh, not on the portfolio that we are financing, but in the end, it's important what you do with the building when it is uh, when it is um, uh, obsolete. And um, well, as a lender, we are of course uh, driven by uh, risk. We know that the risks on buildings which are uh, not being tackled are higher, meaning that there will, of course, be a larger spread of, of yield uh, between stranded assets and assets which have been taken care of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, yeah. I, I agree. Uh, I, I won't call it automatically. I think we're speeding up already. So uh, on one hand, it's uh, driven by the selection uh, or actually requirement criteria of for example, the capital flows. And so when we are very selective, uh, also investment management and development companies need to upgrade uh, at CAPEX, uh, upgrade their existing portfolios, because I think this is the more difficult task. And new build developments, of course, is difficult in terms of pricing, but uh, uh, upscaling existing portfolios is difficult. But I think the, the, the user perspective, that's more slower. And, and, and also, I think we, we need to also uh, start with our own vision, also from the build environment ourselves. Like uh, I think Jaap already mentioned, we should take responsibility because we are now for 40% responsible for uh, the carbon emissions. So uh, it starts with ourselves. Yeah. Can I, can I add something to this? Because I like the, uh, uh, the thing uh, Ron says regarding your customers, your tenants, uh, the users of your building. Um, so here we are making buildings very efficient. Uh, the, the last missing piece is creating effective awareness among your users. And that's where we focus on for the upcoming years, not just the building. That's, that's good. You know, we know how to do that. And there's plenty more prop tech coming in. Uh, but in the end, it's persuading uh, your tenants to use the building as effectively and efficiently as possible. And keeping a keen eye on your stakeholders. It's, you know, we're talking about tenants, but if you really take a closer look, uh, then you see a great variety in there, uh, not just in residential, in age groups and stuff like that, but also if you go to the commercial side, whether it be offices, uh, type of business you uh, you have as your tenants or retail type of business you have there, including their customers. Uh, so, the, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're yeah. both active in convenience retail. Do you yeah. have the tools to um, to work with them in that manner to 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 stimulate perhaps efficient yeah. use? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a hill up climb because uh, here you have maybe a. a a local shopping center uh, with, with your butcher, your baker and your supermarket, then you need to tie in the relationship with uh, the, that type of business to align your goals with their goals. Uh, and therefore, it's also very helpful uh, to in that extent that new regulation has come into place. That's really a push for everyone involved in society to comply with new regulation. And that's what I like about the regulation, that, that thing on its own, it's not perfect regulation, we know that. It will take time before it gets there, but it's now a very good push for to get people aligned in there and open the dialogue. Yes, I'll spend money uh, on that, OPEX or CAPEX, uh, but um, there are good KPIs uh, on cash flow, on capital values and risk. We regard ESG as part of risk management. And we can track uh, in the cash flow what will be the, uh, the consequences of good risk management. And that's again good for our investors looking for a better risk reward, also being it future proof. I fully agree, yeah, because yeah. to my opinion, OPCO and PROPCO should be on the same page. Yeah. That's about alignment, but that's very difficult. And also, it takes more active management. And I think that's, that's also where competitors will differ from each other and also be more successful in the long run. Yeah, yeah. A, a, lot to, a, a lot to yeah. unpick in, in, in that. I, I wanted to just, just pick up a yeah. little bit on, um, uh, Jan, just, just coming back to you, because um, there's, a, you know, there's a lot of discussion about social impact and um, 
and Ron mentioned that, but also from what we've been seeing, you know, even though we launched Impact, um, you know, only in in October, already the discussion around that, you know, th- there's a lot of focus on what people mean by impact. Um, you know, is an impact fund really an impact fund? Um, what's what's the situation there in 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 Germany? Because um, it seems to differ also in, in in various places. But what's the position there? I think that's a very good question, Richard, because um, what we're missing uh, in this discussion, and I'm with everyone, uh, what has been said already, um, is the regulatory view of it. Um, and in Germany as well, since there happened um, some sort of uh, greenwashing uh, uh, parts or uh, events in Germany, events is not a good event, but um, the DVS, for example, was in, in the newspapers, not very good. So um, for our company, it's... Um, uh, they try to not use the the word impact because uh, there has always been a definition of impact within the German market. So it's really hard for us not to be in this greenwashing corner, and we won't uh, we won't be we don't want to be there. So um, and on the regulatory side, we see that uh, even last week in the reports, it was issued that for commercial real estate there won't be any S left um, because um, the S might only be for um, housing and social housing and uh, to go, yeah to do something good there and not within the commercial real estate sector and i'm not saying that we haven't it's easy to do the s in the commercial real estate um, and uh, it's hard to measure as i said i'm with everybody here which which has been said already but um we do a lot of it as well we we've been fundraising for cancer projects and everything like that for example but um, we we can't take that into account uh, in terms of regulation, and our regulator in Germany, the BaFin, uh, won't accept it within the commercial real estate sector. So it would be very hard for us to be a so-called Article Nine fund in the SFDR within existing building uh, stock funds. Um, so um, yeah, impact actually the BaFin is saying we can't really do. We, we can't actually only do it if we. Um, yeah, have uh, uh, do, do something very in, innovative, something new, uh, or to um, manage uh, uh, um, mm-hmm. a solar uh, park which wouldn't have been built because it's a, a rough environment or whatever. So that would be only an impact. Um, so it's it's a really hard and tough discussion <coughs> in Germany, and um, everybody mm-hmm. in the market from the big companies not saying they're doing impact. They're only saying that we have an Article Nine fund, for example. And, and do you think that's <clears throat> that's limiting these kinds of initiatives, Jan? Do you think that's actively yes. preventing people from, you know, yes. doing what we all want to do, which is, yes, is actually make of course. it better? As I, as I just said, the transformation, in my uh, my point of view, is missing. And we see that investors are looking for these certain funds. Uh, actually, I had a discussion this week with a big pension fund, and they were saying, I want an Article 9 fund. And I'm saying, do you really know what it is? And and no. and what, so uh, and they, they said, I want to do something good. I want to do an impact. And I'm saying, yeah, then go for Article 6 and uh, buy the brown ones and transform them into Article eight or nine uh, properties so um and that's the big problem in my point of view with regulation right now that is so uh, black and white and there's no transformation so to answer yeah. your question correctly yes i see that's a big problem yeah yeah can i add something you I, can. I, 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 I oh sorry yes Richard. i'm just saying you it's terribly polite and you don't need to ask permission anymore just okay <laughs> okay thank you thank you um you know this uh yeah regulation it, it's not perfect and it will take maybe decades before it's perfect and then we're in another place uh, this article nine you know the sfdr never fully understood by the industry it's not a product label uh it's disclosure uh and it's out of the question that article nine will be you know feasible for many of the existing funds it's not uh, and I refer to the INREF paper recently published on that and the discussion going on in ESMA uh, on that. So Article 9, uh, we, we need to really um, explain to uh, investors, pension funds, what it really is SFDR. And that Article 9, it's not the thing to look for. Jan, you're right, you know, go for five, six to eight. That's, that's about it you can do and focus on the other goals you have to make them more tangible. Because SFDR is it's not the thing which will drive us forward. And there, are, there are other goals and objectives in there. Um, typical discussion on regulation. Very, you know, I we see that throughout Europe, um, but we we do take some time to explain to investors 
what SFDR really is. Uh, it's not a product label. It is not. Sorry to say, but just for anyone who's listening, to take a look at the Inref website, you know, pick up the, the latest paper on that, and there you can see where we are today. It's still in consultation. And maybe in the years to come, things will change. But in the meantime, if you want to focus on doing something good, creating some level of impact, uh, pick other goals and KPIs. That might maybe be more yeah. useful. Yeah. Okay. Sorry? Yeah, maybe a quick comment on the S um, discussion we see right now, I mean, outside mm -hmm. the SFDR. What we basically see uh, here right now is already very high social standard. And um, for us, example also the companies focusing for many years on on esg like jan has been doing an incredible job to yeah, yeah. be in the forefront of the of the game um is, is the discussion started also in 2012 when the first green lease agreement was developed their discussion was already on on user satisfaction tennis satisfaction was played also has, has gained in importance over the year and mm. um yeah. what you also see this a supply chain duty of care requirements which are coming more and more important and the industry is already with with the CR looking at these requirements and to make sure that social minimum safeguards are, standards are being complied with for entire supply chains even before the regulators um, request that from you so I think um, even yeah. though it might be tricky to have an article 9 fund um, already um, the, the yeah the S is, is on the agenda and there's already, um, yes, some strict requirements are in place here as well. Yeah. yeah. You know, next to that, what I kind of like, uh, if you look at all those drivers impacting ESG, uh, it's what we do ourselves, right? Our commitment to certain goals is the regulation we just discussed. Uh, it's the, uh, the view of our investors, which have ch is changing in the right direction. Another thing, what I noticed is there uh, those civil court cases where citizens, you know, take a company or an industry to court and they win. Uh, and uh, that's also a driver. We you know, keep a close eye on that to see what's coming out of that driver, uh, which we can implement in our policy. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you for like mentioning that. that. Yeah. Yes, me too. Thank you for bringing it up. Usually I'm the one yeah. because okay. that's something I, also everywhere in the world that's is basically in a development in front of the courts, which you see. And you see that, of course, in relation to climate change, but you also see that in relation to um, human and labor rights. Yeah. For example, in, in the UK, um, you see so many companies being sued there for, for breaches of their own code of conduct of, yeah, taking place somewhere else in the world by affiliated companies. Yeah. And also, when you look at regulation, the courts are basically requesting the governments to implement stricter climate protection laws. And then it's also what I personally find very um yeah, let's say challenging or interesting is also these cases where corporates are being sued um, for the, the emissions um, they've been um, have been emitted over the last couple of years, which were basically allowed emissions, but they now have to pay for damages for, for um, flooding protections and so on. And that's also really the sentiment in front of the court has changed to also drive that development, which is really, the, you managed risk before, is a really, really important aspect in, in yeah, the risk management um, assessment. Yeah, yeah. No, that's good. Um, there's lots of questions coming in, um, okay. uh, so thanks very much for those. Um, the joy is if you really like those questions, you can also click on like. Um, <laughs> um, so feel feel free to do that. Um, there's a, there's a couple of them um, coming. One one which I think is is interesting, um, and I'll come to yours, Jake, in in, in a second. Um, but one which 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 I think gets down to the heart of it, and, and you mentioned there as well, Jan, of course. Um, greenwashing and this is from um stephen oakton um which is what are the panel actually doing to deliver genuine esg accredited developments um without greenwashing um mm. so it, it would be interesting just 
you know, because this is around effective ESG strategies. And, you know, Jan mentioned already there the, the sort of accusations of greenwashing around the impact side. Um, have we moved beyond that? But I mean, I guess, you know, what effectively are we doing that with investments? Maybe let's start with you, Rokia, in terms of the, the, the financing side. Um, I, I suppose, how do you make sure that your strategies are supporting genuine ESG development or transformation um, rather than the greenwashing side? Yeah, the most important aspect, I believe, is to be transparent about uh, what you're doing and quantify uh, the impact of, in our case, uh, the buildings. Uh, of course, we have our sustainability link bonds, which is directly linked to the performance of the operations of the company. But the bigger impact that we have is on the, uh, is on the portfolio, not so much on the uh, new business or the acquisitions of our uh, clients. And uh, in order to, uh, to qualify uh, for green building, you need labels and for labels you need quantification uh, without quantification it doesn't go but i I've, I've over the past uh, months i've read a lot of corporate policies which are rather holistic and contain a lot of uh, contain a lot of words and it has been challenging to derive uh, uh, the, the the quantity and the quality of those uh, of those policies and i believe that if we make if we quantify it makes it more transparent and easier um, that would avoid greenwashing. Great, thanks. Um, be good. Uh, maybe Jan, just from from your just from your point of view. I mean, maybe maybe just briefly is you know how does that strategy work, um, and how does that guarantee the the sort of you know th that you deal with that greenwashing element. Mm -hmm. um I think the good thing is about greenwashing that our sales um, departments are very cautious not to uh, yeah be in that corner and. Um, also understand that we have to do it correctly and do it right and not just saying that we're doing something and are actually doing something about it. That's why we're focusing on data within the buildings, something like um, Double also does. And we want to know how the performance of the building really is and try to digitalize, you might call it, the the, the technical building parts within the building. I'm not talking about um, smart buildings. I'm only talking about the mechanical parts. And... Um, uh, within the, if you look at the acquisition side, we we of course look at taxonomy and principal versus impacts and all that stuff. Um, but the main goal is to find out how we are in terms of being on the climate path. For example, there is this uh, benchmarking since I think two or three years now, CREM, the carbon risk real estate monitor, and we always benchmark uh, our acquisitions and the existing buildings towards this uh, climate path. So that's the the biggest goal we want to have and. Um, yeah, and we try to still invest into so-called brown buildings because we see that we have um, a responsibility there and that we have to deal with the building stock. And um, that's the way, in a, in a nutshell, how we do it. And how we and, and a big part, of course, I want to add that as well, is to really uh, inform the investors how it really works. This talk I just had this week, I have so, several talks and explaining them how the SFDR works and what's really the goal of the SFDR and what the union wants, um, the European Union, of course, um, wants. Um, so um, that's, I, I think, right now, one of my biggest jobs to, to really um, tell them and communicate what um, sustainability is all about or the regulation is all about and what we actually really have to do. So we need the investors um, to be part of it. We can't uh, deal with it or have double, for example, to um, improve the buildings if the investors are not willing to pay for it. Everybody has to understand that sustainability is not um, uh, free for everybody. So we have to pay a certain amount for it and we have to have the will to really do it to have an impact um, i mean we we just had uh storms big storms within the europe right now and they were destroying a, a lot of um stuff uh, within the environment so uh, we see that the the environment is changing so we have to do something about it um, and uh, abel in, in terms of that um transparency side how important do you think um this access to data more data digitalization is in terms of, I guess, also ensuring um, that, that there's more information and therefore it's, it's, you know, it's less possible to have greenwashing in a way because the, the data is out there and it's, you know, it can be benchmarked. Absolutely. Um, actually, we have a very, is there international protocols like IP, MVP, different options. So you have many, many ways to, to really demonstrate. There's no way around. Actually, 
Um, more older or less older, you are all paying energy bills, right? Right. So you see kilowatt hour to kilowatt hour. Um, you have. We have to be aware, uh, as an engineer background, for out of of double. Um, nobody will go to the buildings and we have like one hundred percent accuracy, right? So we'll have to measure like the coefficients of the insulation and the mom. So it's not one hundred percent. Never. Okay, it's an acceptable range of error that is not relevant in some cases. Um, the data and the way of doing it is there, but I think I am in the E part of the ESG mainly, but I would like to to join us three what Jan, Roger before and, and Peter was highlighting. We as some kind of demonstrate solution, we already would say make our long way in the last four or five years to, to position ourselves. We have many uh, square meters under management. And one of the things that we are seeing, and I am really aiming to, to highlight here, one of the barriers is not the data of the buildings, it's not the way of demonstrating, it's not if the regulation says A or B or C, it's the leadership. It's the really that the leaders of you, of your big, huge real estate companies and players of the market really transmit those goals, those missions to their teams. They need to transmit this because people, and I will be really very transparent in that, they are usually in big enterprises, be afraid of making mistakes. And that is a very wrong philosophy that the, but we are going to pay very, very, we all have a high price if we don't tackle the G part. Nobody's taking attention on the transparency and the, it's, very, it's, it's the most important thing. If you are not aligned with your team, you are really moving, this, you can face a, because you never face the owner of the company or the CEO in the first conversation. You face someone that have a goal of making the portfolio more sustainable, especially in the last three to six months. Everybody was hiring head of ESG, ESG managers uh, that was previously was property managers, uh, head of sustainability as well, that Jan was uh, their couple of years before. Now is this head of ESG, this guy just basically trying to find solutions for everything. It's, it's very tough. Very, very difficult job right now. And we are telling the leaders, please take attention there, transmit you really want to be part of it. Let your people, let them buffer, let them to try. Obviously, with you train them to, to be conscious of okay, we need certain KPIs, we need to make it in some way. But if you never try, you never know if, if you can really advance. But to be afraid of advance is not the way to move forward. Um, a, a couple of interesting questions that have just come in as well. I wanted to pick up. Um, so, um, Jake, Jake Lodge, thanks very much. Um, good to see you here. And Andrew Peterson as well. Good to see you both here. Um, so from Jake, are there any practical tools or benchmarks that the panel can recommend owners of existing buildings to use um, to help boost the ESG credentials of their portfolio? Um, and from Andrew, um, regulation is a very effective stick, and we've talked a lot about regulation, but is it time to only focus on stick and not to focus on subjective carrots? So really focus on the, uh, you know, on the, I suppose, the punitive side of regulations in terms of drive this forward rather than encouraging people. Um, I don't know, does anybody have a view on any, on any of those? On the carrot and sticks, yep. Uh, yeah, we talked a lot about regulation in this uh, panel. Uh, but there are also some benefits of uh, ESG. Those might be a bunch of carrots there. Um, it's the, the risk mitigation, which is also 10, you, you can measure that uh, by KPIs, uh, which is helpful for your investors. Uh, but it is also the additional costs for your tenants, which can be reduced. And that's a carrot. Um, and every step, I think Abel already, you know, gave a perfect uh, uh, pitch on that. Every step you're taking in the right direction opens up new, more possibilities. So in terms of tools, uh, there's a lot of tools out there. Uh, is anyone is interested to hear, let's see specifically what we do, for instance, at Altera, it, it would overstep the, the time limits of this, this, uh, this uh, uh, webinar. Uh, feel free to contact, uh, you know, happy to explain. Great. No, that's yes. good. And uh, feel free to jump in and give, 
details, yes, uh, feel free to drop me a note and I will put yeah. you in contact. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I wanted to give some examples as well and to uh, join what just Yap said. Um, uh, if you want to look at risk and you don't have, really have the data, um, there are insurance companies who can help you. For example, we're using the data from Munich Re. Um, they have a huge uh, data about um, yeah, climate risks. So we're using that uh, to uh, do our risk management. Um, you can have a look on that. Yes. And um, I already mentioned CREM, the Carbon Risk Real Estate Monitor, which is also, I think, a very handy tool, even though you need a lot of data as well to, um, uh, to do the um, assessment within it. But you could only use, as we do it, the climate path, which is in there in terms of CO2 emissions and uh, or carbon emissions, and as well uh, the kilowatt hours um, which we have to face in the different countries and in different um, properties. So it's not just uh, uh, everything fits all. It's, uh, it, it depends what kind of property you have and what kind of countries. So it's a very, very good, in my opinion, climate path. And um, as well, there are a lot of um, initiatives in different countries. I only want to mention one in Germany. If you haven't heard about it, it's ECOR. Uh, um, and in ECOR, we try to benchmark ourselves. Um, uh, we, we gave our... Um, uh, a tool which is called the sustainable investment check within this um, initiative so that everybody's doing it in the same way and we can really talk about best practices and and what what is really um able to to reach right now and as well to discuss what kind of good solutions are in the market for example uh, we have double here on this uh, panel um there are a lot of prop techs who are doing good work and uh, we haven't might not known or heard about so these are some examples i can want to give you as well and share here I can, yeah, actually, uh, I can actually add that we are also part of the e-core recently. So we have started this, this year, Jan. So I really like the, the initiative and the bar. Um, so yeah, I wanted to, to say that this is sort of the solutions out there. And also uh, raising the hand as well. You can find me in LinkedIn. If you can also, as Peter says, whatever you need, whoever is listening, you want to know what happened in your portfolio, what do we do first? And I'm happy to, to serve. Great, good. Um, we've got less than 10 minutes left. How quickly this has gone on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Rocky, I just wanted to pick up with you on some of the some of the challenges and particularly around that transformation side, um, because that's obviously going to be a huge part of the, the market going forward. Yeah, yeah. I, I already uh, touched on the topic of uh, users and um, I uh, derived from several discussions, including this one, that the role of users is becoming more and more uh, important when it comes to the performance of a, uh, of a building. And um, um, as you know, and we especially experience that during acquisition phases of properties, that it is not always possible for our clients to uh, assess what is necessary to, uh, to really make the building greener uh, in, the, in the first phase. And secondly, to, um, to, to, to make the user cooperate on the uh, potential redevelopment of such a property. So the, 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 the simple measures that, that has been taken so far uh, have often been taken with the uh, user being in the building. But at some point, if you really want to have an impact you might need cooperation of the uh, of the tenant, and that is not always uh, catered for. Um, that is an important challenge that we uh, that we will see. That also applies, by the way, for uh, the residential sector. It's the same thing. Uh, in all, if you own that, Jaap might know that you own a large uh, portfolio of, uh, of 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 housing. You want to work on it. You will need cooperation. It has to be uh, paid for. Of course, you do not want to increase uh, uh, rents, at least not too much, perhaps moderately. And that is a big uh, challenge that the market uh, uh, has in front of, uh, of it, uh, moving from uh, building new green buildings to uh, work on the portfolio and make it uh, better. And that implies indeed cooperation from, uh, from users. That's the big challenge. I want to add very short there. Uh, tenants, I think, are feeling the increase of energy prices, right? And mm. the inflection that we are having in the markets. You can tell them you are going to pay it anyways. Yes, you are right. It has a, some positive impact. Yeah, so. uh, I, you know, uh, Rogier, I, uh, I agree, uh, but it's a very interesting dialogue with, with users and tenants because mm. basically uh, they want to have proof what's in it for me. And that's their right, you know. Uh, I just cannot increase the rents if additional uh, uh, cost of living 
uh, would also increase or not decrease. So it's just opening the dialogue to be very clear and transparent uh, to your tenants. Listen, this is what we want to do. This, this, those are the benefits. Those are the costs. Uh, let's split the revenues. Uh, that's basically uh, the short of it all in the dialogue. But it takes time and stamina, uh, and you need to be able to relate to your tenants and users, uh, which is interesting in itself also. It's a social aspect where moving away from being, let's say, from the financial industry more into the service uh, industry, uh, catering your tenants and users. Interesting. Yeah. It is actually very social to improve the energy efficiency of your building, Yeah, which is nice in this discussion, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe maybe just, one, just one additional comment, uh, yeah, because I think uh, it's, it's very important to tackle the split incentive uh, question. Yeah. And therefore, I think um, uh, there's only one way, and that's the green way, and, and, and also users. Uh, and I think you can learn a lot from operational real estate uh, uh, asset classes. Uh, therefore, yep. maybe also uh, try to get some inspiration, for example, from the healthcare sector, where we also have healthcare operators with their uh, opcos, and where you have the propcos on the investor side, and and you have to make a, a Paris proof plan together, and and and, and therefore it's uh, it's and, and it's not a question anymore. So and this this uh, split incentive problem, I think that's the main argument why on the real estate side we should be more. Uh, with the opco and propco on one paper because uh, that's where the the solution is. We have to invest on the propco side, but it has impact on the opco side and also from the business case perspective, it's on the same page. But mm -hmm. it's not only uh, and and the revenues are not all, always on the same page where you invest. So exactly, exactly, that's, that's crucial. Yeah. And maybe yeah. one additional comment, because also the previous discussions about uh, measurements, uh, I think that's the main driver also, Richard, why we took the initiative uh, for the impact journal. I think we need to also create some common understandings, uh, working on definitions and also working on some sort of standardization. Uh, because when you look at all the measurement tools, from uh, the, the building related measurement tools like BREEAM, LEED, WELL, etc. Um, uh, we're always, we're, we're quite searching and also benchmarking wise, uh, I think GRASB is a great example, uh, but we, we have to work on some yeah. uniform way of communicating with each other from the capital flow also to the user side. And, and I think this is quite important because otherwise we're spending a lot of time on this monitoring definitions reporting questions but indeed it's time for action and and therefore i think regulation is sometimes a difficult one so uh, i just wrote uh, the, the the last word for the impact journal who will be published at bpin and the, the header was no rules rules i think it would be very interesting for the build environment also to have more flexibility towards actions mm -hmm. so not not focusing, I think it's, uh, it's already one observation, like uh, maybe 50% of this webinar was focused on regulation, uh, but we, we, we should be much more straightforward in working together, cooperative towards Paris. And, and that's my, really my purpose. I'm good. One thing actually to mention, because um, uh, absolutely right, an, an hour has not been long enough here to discuss all of the elements that we <laughs> we, we wanted to discuss, um, and there's plenty more to pick up on for certain. Um, there will be sessions at MIPIM, um, and hopefully Torsten can uh, put those in in the chat. Um, but on the basically on on the 16th, um, there'll be a networking breakfast for everybody interested in ESG impact um at, at uh, club mipim 22 so do join us there for that and then there'll be a follow-up discussion um and we'll pick up some of the themes from here and take that forward um uh, and pick up anything anything that we missed here in this discussion we'll pick up in that one so if you're there do join us and you will also be able to join the live stream if you're not there in can um, but either way um it would be great to have you on board for for those ones um i just wanted to do a, a kind of a final round um of, of questions um, just picking up on, I suppose, where everybody sees 
this moving forward too. Um, but as part of that, Christiana, I was keen to also pick up from you because I know PwC have been doing some kind of work with clients on how they actually do refine an effective ESG strategy. And I know this is a difficult question in 30 seconds, um, but, uh, but maybe if you could just give us some insights on that, just in terms of, because I think it's interesting picking up these points that they've been around, particularly collaboration. Um, so let's start with you, Christiana, and then I'll, I'll pick up everybody else's is last kind of thoughts before we close. Christiana. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, we mentioned before various tools, benchmarking solutions. I think there are all great tools, no doubt of that. But anybody has to do their own homework. So it's basically really about defining your own ambition level to do a thorough stakeholder analysis internally and externally. And then it's about doing a proper get analysis. And what we see right now, it's really take, bringing all people on board to basically implement it in the various teams. And um, you helped us a lot with one of our last projects where we, where we changed our approach from a risk assessment project where we tried to deliver knowledge and we changed it into a change management project. And this was really important. And I think it was also mentioned before making sure that anybody is on board with the ESG agenda, with the ESG strategy and understands what, what he or she has to do. And um, is also able to to deal with it within the regular workload. So that's yeah. Then I think one last comment. It's really about a trial and error approach. We heard before it's what we are kind of scared to do mistakes, but um, it's still a journey. So um, we can only recommend to start um, working on the various topics and to see what works for you, and um, then. Just closing also with something which was said a week ago in the US, basically, when we spoke about diversity. So it's really hard work for anybody, but then it's a hell lot of fun as well. Yeah. Great. Well, that's that's very good. We we like that that element. Um, Jan, just just coming to you. Um, I, I suppose um, your kind of last thoughts on that. Um, and the the sort of biggest opportunity where you see you know the industry making a positive impact for 2022 and beyond. Yes, I think um, there can also be a very positive aspect on ESG as well. If you if you know how to solve it, you will be the king in the market. So I think you have to always look on the positive side. And we were talking today a lot about the negative side as well as regulation. Um, so um, the regulation showed us, in my opinion, that um, sustainable sustainability finally is here to stay and it's out of the marketing corner. That's the good news. Um, but now we have to move on and put regulation aside. And as we said so many times here within this, this talk, we have to move on and really take action and do it. And as Christiana said, I think she's totally right with everybody has to do his own work. And um, you have to come from a property level up to your company level and have to match all these um, targets you want to solve and have in your own strategy. So, um, yeah, uh, sustainability is a broad um, variety of tasks and uh, topics, but it, it's a lot of fun. I can only uh, agree with Christiane fully. fully. Great. Um, Abel, Abel, just coming to you, I suppose, um, where's the biggest opportunity from, from, from your side in terms of making that positive impact? Um, I think I would pick up, I mean, on what uh, already all of you have, have mentioned, but the, the most important, I think the message of this is could be like, it's fun for you guys. And it's also more actually, if you analyze the profitability of your business, if you make it, if you run your business in a sustainable way, you will earn more money. So just be more like there. So that is also the tenants, they can even save uh, money if they implement this kind of stuff. So it's, it's a matter of angle. If I'm at the end of waking up and really seeing the problem a little bit more in the big picture, what is coming in, in 10 years and trying to transmit it in the best way. So educating, because we have to be aware of that, as Jan also very good mentioned, it's a complex problem, right? So nobody have like, okay, that's the formula. You can do it in this way. Uh, don't forget that buildings are unique. All of them, each of them, they were like some kind of art piece. And that makes the problem even more harder. But uh, there are already many people that we, we in our part, let's say on the PropTech part, we're really analyzing, trying to understand you and trying to bring solutions that can help to, but the, to, to solve that. But the important thing, let's collaborate. You don't need to, to know, okay, I will make this solution and that will be the thing for the next 20 years. Change this mentality. It's not anymore this moment. It's like, let's do it. Let's have an action. Let's measure it. It works. Let's move. Impact. And also, let's think 
like as Peter says, think ahead, act now. I love this sentence. Great, good. Ron, uh, Ron, coming to you, last thoughts. Yeah, well, to my humble opinion, uh, this topic is about leadership in the end. Uh, we don't need a carrot. We don't need a stick. I, I guess we need a mirror. We should look at ourselves. And to my opinion, it's about our future of our, well, let's call it society, so our children. And I think we, we should take responsibility. And I fully agree on the positive flow because I've been here for 20 years on this topic. And, and I'm really positive about uh, the, the energy and the, the acceleration. Uh, but uh, it's, it's about leadership in the built environment. So uh, let's start yourself and, uh, and go forward. Great. And uh, Jaap, over, over to you. Okay. Thank you. Here's uh, Amsterdam. Um, just a couple of things. Uh, first, uh, you know, um, share and lead uh, in a random order. So lead by taking care of the compliance, uh, to in implement your ambition on ESG. It's a bit strange if you want to fence off ESG in your business model today. You have to include that. Uh, and uh, have opportunity to innovate and share knowledge, insights, experience, and benefits. If you take these two lines, you know, those, those of lead and share, uh, my feeling, at least from my perspective, is then uh, things will come your way uh, and you can reap the benefits of that. Great, thank you. Um, and Rokia, over to you. Um, just in terms of the, um, th there was a question came in that we haven't had a chance to deal with, but that was on stranded assets, which we will pick up in in MIPIM for certain. Um, but uh, ju just kind of uh, kind of final thoughts from you, Rokia. Yeah, I am super much looking forward to all the business plans that we will see in the near future, uh, avoiding mm -hmm. those stranded stranded assets. By the way, Richard, um, uh, for construction of affordable housing, uh, for making buildings really greener. I mean, all of us love real estate. Many of the people dialed in um, probably cho chose their jobs because they love real estate. And um, all these conversions, all these upgradings, all the investments are going to make it more interesting and lovely. Building nice places <coughs> to uh, work and live. What else do we want? I'm looking forward to that. Thanks very much for joining us, everybody, this morning. Thank you.